welcome to uh, this uh, short walkthrough of uh, chapter number two in the book, uh, the fifth edition of Purchase and Supply Chain Management by uh, Arjen van Wielen. Uh, chapter two here will uh, <clears throat> put focus on the industrial uh, buying behavior and within there the decision making. Um, what we can see here on, on this slide is that the uh, industrial buying and the industrial market is uh, much different than a consumer market. We can go down and, and have a look at some of the aspects, uh, buying objective, uh, the industrial market is to enable production. In the consumer market, it is a personal need uh, that is driving it. Uh, the motivation industrial market is mainly rational. Uh, and in a consumer is quite often emotional. Um, you can say that the decision making in an industrial market includes uh, many people, whereby the decision making uh, is often uh, impulsive uh, without consulting any others. Uh, very professional orientated quite often in the industrial market uh, and not so much in the uh, consumer market. So what you can see here, there's uh, plenty of different aspects that does go in and make uh, the, the process of and the buying behavior uh, between the industrial market and consumer market are very different. Um, variables that affect the buying process. I mean, you, there are plenty, and then here is maybe just a, a few. Uh, the characteristics of the product, it may be a very uh, high priced or low priced product, the strategic importance. We will come back to that uh, throughout the, uh, the lectures. Uh, and, and here we are going to zoom in on the Kralik uh, segmentation model. Uh, and uh, you will hear much more about that uh, during uh, the lectures to come, uh, where you can see that the strategic importance is very different uh, between the, the different products. And so we will also require a different uh, management and, and process around it. Um, go down to the very bottom. It can also be a new buy, a modified rebuy, or a straight rebuy. And of course, that would also call for a different process in the in the buying process. Here's the uh, the approach, uh, the process, uh, which we also saw uh, shortly in the uh, first lecture. Uh, it consists of you can see uh, the top uh, blue uh, boxes. The first one is uh, defining the specifications, a very critical point. Um, and the role of the uh, procurement organization here is to get the specifications from the uh, organization. And the elements that need to get is uh, the functional specification and the technical specifications. And based on that, they should draw up a uh, document outlining the uh, specifications and thereby also the requirements that a company is having for the product or service that they want to buy from a supplier. And, and needless to say, it is overly critical that these specifications are, are done uh, with uh, careful thinking behind it because only by defining really clearly what it is that you want to purchase you will be able to select the right supplier for that service uh, or that product and uh, and you will also only be able to get the right pricing if you have specified the uh, right requirements so a very critical aspect uh, the book is defining that for each of these uh, elements uh, that you see in the blue boxes, for each phase, so to say, that they recommend that there is a go-no-go -no -go decision, uh, kind of a uh, what you will probably know of a stage gate type model. Uh, so uh, once you have defined uh, the specifications, you go over to the uh, supply selection. Uh, and uh, here, a critical role again for the purchasing department to uh, to assure that there is adequate supply selection uh, involved, uh, pre qualifications. Uh, this is a could be a, a rather time consuming uh, process uh, step here, uh, where you are looking at the uh, the uh, suppliers and um, and really diving into what are their capabilities. Um, and uh, then do some pre-qualifications, um, selecting down to a short list that you would like to uh, move on to a uh, to a contract uh, negotiation with. And quite often, uh, you would not like to have only uh, one company in the uh, contract uh, phase, uh, because it could be the case that you can't find the agreement. 
and so you uh, you could uh, face that one of them is pulling out so it's quite nice to have um, maybe two uh, suppliers in this uh, in this phase um, it is again a time consuming uh, task so uh, it is also a balance between time that you can you can spend on it and again uh, that comes from how critical is this uh, service or product that you are buying uh, over to uh, the ordering now we into the more execution part uh, you need to establish uh, order routines, um, how should the orders be handled, and then uh, further on into the uh, execution uh, of it. Um, and then uh, the final part uh, of this process is the evaluation. Uh, again, uh, assess suppliers is a key role for a procurement department, uh, making sure that they are performing to specification. Uh, Maybe you will have a supply development team in place that you want to be working with the supplier on further developing their capabilities and their performance. So this is a, a critical role that once you are in operation, you will still be uh, focused in on, uh, on keep on improving your supply base because in the end of the day, they are part of uh, your supply chain. And as, as very commonly said is that the supply chain is only as strong as the weakest link uh, and that goes also for your supply base. Uh, the purchasing process, uh, again here, the added value of a professional buyer lies in the ability to act as a facilitator for the supply process. Uh, and just to uh, go through some of the bullet points, identify new potential suppliers is a key role, add new knowledge into the, uh, the portfolio of uh, knowledge base that you're having in your company. Uh, they are also critical in the new product development process to uh, make sure that the time to market is uh, coming down and uh, one way to do that is to uh, work, uh, maybe have some early supply involvement in the NPD process which we will go through throughout the courses. Uh, and then as you can see here, prepare and carrying out contract negotiations, we have just stepped on that, uh, setting up order routines. Uh, and then monitor the orders and so forth. So there are plenty of areas <clears throat> where a professional buyer can, can really add some value. Over here to the uh, e-procurement solutions. Um, they are marketplaces and there are different uh, solutions out there. There are different auctions. Uh, there are uh, electronic catalogs. Um, they are used uh, not for all product groups, uh, I would say, uh, more so uh, again when we get into the college segmentation uh, portfolio model there, then uh, the e-auctions uh, could easily be for the, uh, the more routine type, maybe over in the leverage uh, type products, which we'll get into later on. Um, but as you can see here, uh, there are different auctions, uh, reversed, uh, forward, uh, auctions, um, uh, different ways of, of, of handling those auctions. Uh, and on this slide, you will see uh, uh, on the second bullet point that the uh, general e-auction realizes a cost reduction between 5 to 40 percent. So um, there is uh, certainly an incentive to look deep into uh, if e-auctions can be of a benefit to the organization that you are in. And, and one of the ways that those uh, savings are coming in is com coming from this picture, so to say, that the e-auction uh, solution is uh, moving forward a, a possibility to have uh, many more suppliers uh, competing for the same service or slash product, uh, which of course is increasing the competitiveness uh, in the market, uh, also making it a little bit more transparent and by that you are then able to handle, uh, as you can see, e-sourcing 40 to, to 30 or so on the uh, electronic uh, RFI, coming down to the RFP, uh, there you can short this down to 30 to 20. You can handle that in an electronic uh, way. If you look over to the traditional sourcing, once we get down to the RFP level, then you are down to 6 to 3 because it is uh, rather time consuming. And then down to the final negotiations, as you saw, uh, three on the traditional at a max, and over in the e-auctioning, uh, they up to uh, 20. So, so this is, of course, the basis for generating more competitiveness and driving down uh, the cost. But there are also some uh, bottlenecks and problems to um, 
two year option and, and uh, the main focus uh, is really around that it may have a little bit too much of a price focus and not uh, on a total cost of ownership perspective but more on a per piece price so you could get a little bit of a nasty surprise if you're only focusing in on the piece price uh, because you could end up with a heavy uh, total cost of ownership so, so that is one of the areas. There is something around quality. Uh, you you definitely need to make sure that you are focusing in on that as well. <clears throat> so there are a, a few issues around uh, e-auctions that uh, should be considered. Uh, but of course, there is also a huge benefit on the financial side. So um, it's a matter of, uh, of pros and cons when you go for uh, e-auctioning. So in conclusion, uh, industrial buy behavior are very different between uh, industrial buying and, and consumer buying. Uh, we went through the uh, process. Uh, they are very defined process steps from specifications all the way through. And as I said early on, go no go type of uh, process step. And then you have the uh, e procurement solution that can give you a great uh, cost savings, but uh, at a per unit price, but you should have a little bit of a uh, look at the uh, total cost ownership. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you next time.